Okay, everyone, doing more tier lists here. Um, today we got Cock Show Twins on the docket. Uh, quickly went through all of these albums again, uh, skimmed through all the songs just to remember what they were. Um, I have rated all of the albums on Rate Your Music. Uh, my profile should be linked in the description. Uh, so you can go to my profile, search Cocteau Twins, and see all of my album ratings and song ratings if you want to get a little bit more context for how I'm rating these. Um, so the way that I uh, feel about these albums, I reacted to these a while ago. Um, I can actually go look and see what years I reacted to them. The first one I did was Heaven or Las Vegas in 2019. Um, followed that up uh, later on in the year with Treasure. And then I went chronologically in 2020. That was after I'd lost my job. And it was like, you know what, I'm going to go straight through discographies now instead of just kind of sampling different things here and there. Um, and I just kind of finished out their discography uh, from August to about uh, September of that year. So uh, it's been a couple years since I've reacted to those. Um, and 2019 was when I did uh, Treasure and um, uh, Heaven or Las Vegas. Um, but there's some extra context that has kind of helped on this, uh, this re-listen that I have. And um, I think that uh, hopefully this will be a nice kind of follow up a few years after, kind of with my Smiths uh, tier list as well. Um, so I should have linked in the comments below all of my Cocteau Twins reactions if you want to go watch those. Um, and uh, then you can come back to this if you haven't seen them. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. So uh, I'll probably make a couple enemies with some of these ratings, but I think most of them are not controversial. I think this first one might be though, because I know some people really like Garland's. I don't. <laughs> I think Garland's kind of sucks. Um, yeah, so this uh, this album, uh, 82, uh, they're definitely in the, uh, the gothic rock, uh, really thin, wiry kind of ethereal wave post-punk stuff going on here. Um, the track I like most is probably Shallow Than Halo, only by a little bit. I think Wax and Wayne isn't very good. I don't like Blind, Dumb, Deaf. I don't like The Hollow Men. Um, Garland's is also kind of okay. It's just the the production is annoying. It's like the, and the warbly vocals from uh, Liz on these tracks. Um, I don't know. It's this, this album just really bugs me. It's not pleasant to listen to. I can kind of see why some people would like it. Um, but it's just, I don't know, it, it, the production is just so thin and wispy. And for gothic music, for post-punk music, I like something with a little more heft and a little more texture to it. Which we get immediately on uh, Head Over Heels on the next album. Uh, but with Garland's, I don't know what was going on. But it's just, I my reaction kind of still stands on that one. I'm just kind of like... I don't like it. It's not my thing. Um, there's a couple moments that are interesting, but overall, I just kind of write the whole album off. Um, and we'll we'll we have a poll coming up that might have Cocteau Twins winning, um, and we'll be doing their EPs uh, in four different parts over the course of however long it'll take. But um, if that happens, it'll, I'll be interested to hear some of their early EP work. I don't know if it's around the Garlands era, but I don't know, more context, you know, is always nice. Anyway, uh, the next album I have on the list is Head Over Heels. Um, so this one I am putting at C. I actually, upon re-listen, like this album a little bit more than when I first heard it. Uh, this was uh, one year later in 83. Um, really kind of like front runners of the dream pop idea going on here. We definitely have some more like reverb going on in the production. Um, and it's just a little bit thicker. And so it's, it's definitely head over heels, head over, head above, heads above. I don't know. Garlands. Anyway. Um, tracks that I enjoy on here. Uh, my favorites are still, uh, the Tinderbox and Musette and Drums, I think are really nice, dark, interesting, moody, gothic tracks. Um, really enjoy those. Uh, other ones I like are 50, uh, 5, 10, 50 fold. I enjoyed Sugar Hiccup more on a re-listen. Inner Angelhood is nice as well. Um, and then uh, the only one I really dislike is Glass Candle Grenades, I think is just kind of a little annoying. And the rest are okay. The rest are okay. Um, 
as an album, I don't necessarily love this a whole lot, but there are standout moments on here that are pointing forwards to like what Treasure is going to be doing next, um, as well as like some remnants of Garlands, but they've really moved on into uh, a new arena on Head Over Heels. So cool album, cool album. Not 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 a favorite. I don't even necessarily like it, but um, for 83, pretty impressive for what they were going for. Uh, next, Treasure. I love this album. Treasure is fantastic. I uh, I have my own little like bootleg cassette that I made of it because I I like to make homemade cassettes because I'm a weird nerd. Um, this album is uh, fantastic. I really love it. In fact, it is my favorite Cocteau Twins album by a hair. By a hair. I'm sure you'll know what it's uh, sitting right above. <laughs> it's probably an obvious choice, but. Um, I love this thing. I love the atmosphere. Um, I love the tone. I love the songwriting. The vocal melodies are entrancing. Uh, my favorite tracks are Lorelei, uh, as well as really like Pandora. Uh, awesome soundscape stuff there. Amelia. Uh, Am Amelia? Yeah. I have to like double do a double take on every Cocteau Twins song name because it's just slightly <laughs> wrong sometimes. Like, not Domino, Donimo. Um, yeah, Pandora is great. Uh, Amelia is great. Uh, Otterly is really nice as well. And then I have to shout out uh, the opening track, Ivo. Evo, however you say it. The Ivo Watts. I guess it's Ivo. Um, is really nice. Uh, Alo Aloysius? Aloysius? Aloysius is really good. And then uh, the, the final track, Donimo, is also very nice. Um, the only one I really don't like very much are, are Persephone, Persephone and Sicily. Um, I could kind of take or leave those, but the rest, like really entrancing, awesome production, um, some cool instrumental, uh, tracks like per Pandora mixed in there. Really nice. Um, just a really entrancing album and you can definitely see it influencing Robert Smith. I know he listened to this album like the day he got married. Um, but definitely, uh, influenced, uh, like disintegration to a degree, the more like longer ambient droney cure tracks. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. And after having listened to more cure, um, a lot of these albums, especially like head over heels, head over heels. I liked a little bit more because I had listened to some cure. I had some more genre context. And so I was able to be like, Oh, okay. I get this now. Um, whereas at the time it was just a little like a little overwhelming, I guess, and I didn't really have a framework to pin it against. So, Treasure, I think, is really great. Uh, my reaction still stands on that. Uh, love that album a lot. Another album that I also love a lot is Victoria Land. This one's almost an S. Um, I really like this album. I know that's not a controversial take, it's just some people don't really care about this one all that much. Um, and that's largely, I think, just because it's way more ambient um, than their stuff before. It's super like concepty and moody and like, um, sparse. And, uh, we don't have Simon on the scene anymore. Um, it's just kind of Liz and Robin as well as, uh, you know, some people, uh, Richard Thomas from, was, what was that name? Div, Div Juz? Div, Diff Juz. Um, saxophone kind of dream pop stuff. Um, but this album I think is really great. I really like it. Uh, Lazy Calm is perfect. I think Whale's Tales is perfect. Really love uh, Dark Months and Little Spacey. Um, least favorite track is probably Feet Like Fins, but not by much. Um, I think it's just a super pleasant, short 32-minute album. Uh, I remember listening to this album driving through the Rocky Mountain Pass uh, from where I live to Denver or vice versa. Um, and it was just like slightly snowing. Um, and, uh, like not, not enough to be like, oh, I'm going to crash, but like, oh, this is like very pleasant. And then we, uh, put this album on front to back and it was just a super nice mood, super chill. So Victoria Land, great. Um, I want more people to listen to it because I think it's fantastic. Next one, uh, the moon and the melodies. This one, um, uh, it's almost a B. It's almost a B, but I'll probably have to give it. Uh, give it like the top C spot mostly because it, it just feels a little awkward. I think like Harold Budd being on it, um, 
it just kind of feels like it's trying to do two different things at the same time, which is kind of how I feel about, like, about David Bowie's Low. Um, I feel like Low is, it doesn't have a great flow to it. And that might be a controversial thing to say, but it does feel disjointed in terms of like art pop David Bowie and then just like synthesizer ambient stuff. It's just like, I don't know. It, it's kind of weird. But the same thing happening here where you have like memory gongs and the ghost has no name. Really long uh, stretched out ambient work in the midst of just okay uh, Cocteau Twin songs. So it's kind of eh. Um, I do think Sea Swallow Me is nice. Uh, Why Do You Love Me is my favorite one on here. Um, and then Ghost I, Ghost Has No Name and Memory Gongs, I think, are quite pleasant. But like I said, kind of odd. Uh, just kind of throws off the flow of the album a little bit. Even, even though they've done albums with ambient tracks in them before, I don't know why this one just kind of feels a little... I don't want to say boring. It's just the... It's not as compelling as some other work that they put out to me. Um... And then uh, least favorites will be She Will Destroy You, Eyes Are Mosaics, and Ooze Out and Away One How. Just a little bland. Just kind of feels like recycled, standard Cocteau Twins fare at this point. And uh, they did more interesting stuff on Bluebell Knoll. So it's like, I'd rather listen to Bluebell Knoll than, than this. Um, but Why Do You Love Me, I think, is a, is a personal highlight. I think that one is quite nice. Um, next one, Bluebell Knoll. Uh, I will put that right here behind uh, Victoria Land. Um, this album I think is pretty solid. It's a uh, a nice middle ground between like the treasure stuff and what they're going to be leaning into with the more brighter Heaven or Las Vegas and Four Calendar Cafe. Um, it's a it's a solid album, and I could, this is an easy like fourth for me, an easy fourth favorite. Um, if I didn't love Victoria Land, which I almost kind of rate Victoria Land separately because it's a weird oddball one. Um, if Victoria Land wasn't here, that would be my third favorite. Um, it, it's it's really pleasant. Uh, one tracks I like are the title track Blue Bell No, I think is great. Carolyn's Fingers is great. For Phoebe Still a Baby, I love like the really sweet tone of that. Uh, and then Itchy Glow, Bo Blow, <laughs> and Seco Buff I think are uh, commendable as well. Uh, not super super into Athel Bros or Sp I cannot say these tracks. <laughs> Spooning Good Singing Gum. Uh, but overall, I think it's a very consistent album. Uh, the tracks are varied enough um, to not sound too samey, except for a couple here or there. Um, but yeah, just a nice, easy 35-minute dream pop album. Uh, with a little bit of texture from the old days and then the brightness of the new days coming up. Um, it's just a nice, perfect like middle ground of Cocteau Twins. But in that way, I also don't love it as much as some others i just think it's very solid and worth the listen so i don't know anyway that's pretty much all on that one um heaven or las vegas of course one of if not the greatest dream pop album ever made not my personal favorite dream pop album but i do love it quite a bit uh and it goes right behind treasure for me um this album is almost impeccable it's it's a fantastic album um Cherry Colored Funk, Heaven or Las Vegas, perfect tracks to me. Uh, Pitch the Baby, Ice Blink Luck, and Wolf in the Breast, I think, are near perfect as well. Um, the only two tracks that I'm not as into is 50-50 Clown and Fo Footsie Politic. Um, but they're still great. They're still great. This whole album is very nice. Um, the only reason it's not my favorite, I think, is that it... Uh, it lacks the like vibe or texture that Treasure had. Like Treasure was very potent. Heaven or Las Vegas is just super earwormy, nice production, um, but it, it and it just, it reeks of the '90s in a good way, I think. But like it, it just lacks a certain spice, I think, for me anyway. Um, but still, I like like I said, you know, it's right here, so <laughs> I'm not really knocking it at all. Um, yeah, we have two albums left to go, everybody. So for Four Calendar Cafe, it goes right in the middle at B. Um, I don't love this album as much as when I first heard it, but I think that there's a lot of uh, worthwhile tracks on here. And I think it's a very consistent album as well. It's just uh, we're in kind of going into the era of Cocteau Twins sort of 
running out of ideas. Um, and it happens a bit on this album, more on Milk and Kisses. Uh, but there are moments on here that I think are definitely worth checking out. So I think Bluebeard is a fantastic, bright, happy track. Essence is an awesome piece of ambient work. Um, super, super vibey. Um, the only tracks on here I'm not into are My Truth and then the last two, Summerhead and Purr. I have to give props to Summerhead for being like a cool, darker kind of riff. Uh, but it just gets a little boring for me. Uh, Purr feels like just distilled Cocteau Twins into one song, but because of that, it doesn't really have much interesting stuff going on. Um, it just feels like super concentrated Cocteau Twin stuff that like has existed in better tracks. Uh, but like, Know Who You Are at Every Age, Evangeline, Theft, uh, Oil of Angels, Squeeze Wax, they're, they're solid. They're solid. I... I, but the thing is, like, there's other Cocteau Twins songs I'd rather be listening to than those. Um, but if they were like, tur if someone turned them on, I wouldn't turn it off. They're they're decent. They're they're not boring. Um, I think it's just like a few of the later tracks that are just kind of dull. Um, but all in all, Four Calendar Cafe is a nice kind of bright, cheery, breezy uh, Cocteau Twins album that is uh, also I think worth checking out. Not as much worth checking out as the last album, in my opinion, um, which I put right about here. Um, although, no, I'll put it here. It's probably where I'd go. This one, like I said uh, earlier, they're kind of just running out of ideas. Um, it seems sort of phoned in. The chords are not interesting. The vocal melodies are not interesting. Um, the production is same as it has always been. It just kind of feels like they're running out of steam here. Uh, my favorite track is Half Gifts, I think is actually a fantastic track. Um, I highly recommend checking that one out on its own. Um, Rilke and Heart is decent as well. That's a commendable one. Serpent Skirt is all right. Uh, but most of the tracks, I've rated like almost everything else like three out of five. Because they're just kind of like, they're fine, they're there. Uh, but like, I would rather listen to something else, honestly. It just, at this point... There, there's moments on this album that are cool, but it's not, it's not songs. <laughs> the, the songs themselves are just kind of like, ugh, they're, they're a little flaccid to me. But yeah, that is my tier list for Cocteau Twins. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments, what you agree on, disagree on, what you would change. Um, it was nice to go back and listen to uh, some of these tracks again and remember like, oh yeah, that, that was really good. Or, oh, that wasn't as good as I thought it was. Um, but yeah. Solid stuff, Cocteau Twins. Uh, hopefully we'll be getting to the, the EP compilations, uh, Lullabies to Violin, which would take four videos to do. Um, but if that wins the poll, I'll be doing that uh, at some point soon. Or maybe it's already come out, I don't know, whenever I post this video. Um, that's all I got. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more of these. I have a few other bands uh, that I've listened to the full discographies of that I will do tier lists for. Um, and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time... Godspeed.